Set 13's release introduces a range of new support, with a couple of decks receiving new cards that either revamp, expand, or complete change how it's played. Our favorite blue mecha, Avangarda, received a wave support that improves on the few issues the deck faced since release. Avangarda falls into the category of Vanguard self resend decks, like Dragonic Overlord, Minerva, Greedon, Lutetia, etc. His specific niche is an axe skill that, for cost, shoves the strategy order from your aura zone into your soul, gain plus 5k, and draws a card, to then give it to red text which sets it apart from the rest of the clones. As for the red text, to restand with minus 1 drive, Avangarda requires to either hit a Vanguard, or have Persona Road that turn. Accompanied with the red text are the skills of the strategy orders, such as Dusting to lock out intercepts and blitz orders, and Death Winds to pop up the front row plus 5k with each Vanguard swing. Am I forgetting something? Oh. Kill Shroud also exists since it's searchable off the Great Run Ride line, but it carries the least impactful effect. Hence, it's usually ran as a one of. Its skill is to retire a rearguard and give plus 5k, which wasn't impactful in old Avangarda, but we'll come back to this later on. Anyways, Avangarda had very apparent and massive holes in its game plan, such as a significant reliance on Persona for both numbers and its restand, then sprinkled with a bit of peace reliance, and then to top it off, a lack of shield due to running multiple shieldless cards in the deck. Likewise, if other decks that began releasing the earliest episodes of Will Dress Season 2, no, we're not including you, Avangarda accumulated notable pieces such as Hanada Hafway, Hathaway, Ala de Dante, Habitable Zone, etc. So, with the release of Set 13, how is this deck improved? Perhaps is it underrated going to the new meta? Well, let's find out. First things first, on to the new support that Set 13 brings for the deck, Asagi Milestone and Avant-Garde. Avangarda Richer, the new backup plan, but most importantly, the card that makes Avangarda's turn 4 insanely explosive. He has two main skills a superior ride from hand if your opponent's Vanguard is great for your greater. Binding an Avangarda from the Vanguard Circle, which then grants Richard the act abilities of the Bound Avangarda. Next, at the end of battle, ditch 2 to ride the Bound Avangarda as stand, with 10k minus 1 drive, enabling another Vanguard swing. A notable interaction with Richard is that he allows you to soul in two strategies a turn one from Avangarda, then to ride Richard from hand, then to use Richard to soul another. This allows you to both draw two and double up on effects, like combining Dusting's anti intercept and blitz with Deathwind's red text at power increase or even combining Kill Shroud for removal. On the other hand, Richard's second skill allows you to get free Vanguard attacks in a turn each with drives, going from twin to one to one. Furthermore, Richard's non-conditional additional attack allows a player to resend without either needing to soul on orders, need counterblast, hell, not even need to hit slash persona to resend, making the brick less impactful compared to preset 13. Asagi Milestone, also one of the new supports introduced into set 13, it's a grade 1 unit that acts as both a beatstick slash booster and creates consistency and recursion for Avangarda. My god, that was good. Her first skill, using a counterblast, allows you to recur any Avangarda names from the drop zone, meaning that Avangarda has some freedom in, like. Oh, I don't know. And ditching either for ride up and skill costs. You can also call Asagis over Richards that are committed as regards to bounce them back, then use the Richard from hand. Both these cards provide partial answers to Avangarda's problems. But, notably, Richard's addition amplifies a turn 4, hitting like a freaking drop. Power of Avangarda's Persona turns. However, these older cards remain essential to Avangarda's deck composition, and likewise create new interactions with the new support. Ala de Jante, from the English set 12 sneak peek promos, is the most impactful card in the deck, serving both multiple and equally pivotal roles. She gains plus 5k with every Vanguard swing, making her the best beat stick in Avangarda's toolkit. Now with Richer, she drives up to 35k on Persona Ride turns, and 45k if Death Ends is active. Her second skill is an on-play Soul Blast 1, which searches the deck or drop for a strategy order not played this turn, allowing players to recycle orders and plan for future turns. Often, you'd like to Soul Blast the orders use for cost, which opens more targets for recycling. Similar to cards like Eba and Fergosa, if you look through the deck and you don't have a valid order to target, or you would like to target nothing, you can proceed to Shuffle, and afterwards choose a card from your drop. However, do note that she requires an order to be put into soul to activate the search effect, and searches for a different order other than the one put into soul. Otherwise, Allah can also be used as a reliable way to fetch and play two orders a turn, further enabling Richard's explosive turn 4. Halfway Hanada- <clears throat> Sorry. Hanada Halfway has two main skills that supplement Avangarda's game plan, 
the first being a CB1 draw 1, the second being a counter charge on boost if an aura has been played this turn. Yo, is that, is that plus 2k? Importantly, the counter charge is used to ensure that the restand is always live every turn. Likewise, it can be used to refund Asagi's usage to dig back Avangardus from drop. Getting damage denied. Who the hell do you think I am? <clears throat> That's the main bulk of the core, not including the orders, but the rest of the space can be used up as flex butts for either tech or consistency generators. Habitable Zone able to refund your write-up dishes to maintain hand, and allows for set order digging, and setting up two for Persona turns. By cycling himself out for early draws, he allows you to dig for shield value, a la Persona copies, or even richer. However, keep in mind that you cannot Soul Blast the Grade 0 of the Rhineland Sora period, since Avangarda requires them to be in the Soul to use the skill. Lloyd Akazaria th Akaz Lloyd Ax Lo Brant Gate Grade 1 Wretch is used in a way to superior call key regards that combo off the on place, such as Alaf Seekin's Right, or if you're greedy of Counterblast, Hanada to draw 1 or Asagi to fetch Avangardas from the drop. Fryheit, surprisingly, is still a usable option to include in this deck, mainly used to search for Persona Ride copies, ensuring the guaranteed restand and the massive numbers for the following turn. The downside, however, is of course needing to discard, but also that the card does blow to calm space for where you'd rather have Ala in the front rows or a booster. Vogo, an enlightened age dragon, can also be used to recover strategies from the drop, although Ala already fills this role perfectly alongside with these cards having some issues, but it's still viable enough to be run. And I think that should be everything. No, 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 we're not talking about you, get off the screen. The new game plan, well, in quotation marks, is praying that you see your pieces before you hit your Persona turn. Wait, isn't this just how the deck was even before set 13? Hang on, am I reading this right? What the and thanks to Hanada, you realistically only need one counter blast to play a turn, even if it's closed. If necessary, you can commit Wretches, maybe Hanada, and ideally as sparingly Asagi as as early as turn 1, to turn 3 where you can finally commit, or call using Lloyd, your allies to work as both an order searcher, deck filter, and beat sticks. Likewise, what strategy order you choose to soul in this turn depends on the matchup. Otherwise, just soul in for the draw 1 power and Avangarda's red text. The red text is on hit, in theory, is quite powerful during this turn, especially when going first, already demanding your opponent for a perfect guard or a no pass to control value and minimize risk. Otherwise, they'll be hit with the continued pressure from Avangarda. Alternatively, if you go second and a certain game state does force you into a corner, meaning that you actually have to take this play, you can ride Richer onto turn 3 to guarantee a second Vanguard swing. Likewise, you can double up on strategies to pop, deny intercepts or blitzes, or pump up the front row to make the turn a bit more threatening. And now, assuming that everything went at least a bit right for you, the Pritzera turns. With the addition of Richer, you can finally gain 3 Vanguard swings in one turn all of drive checks. Now, how do we make this turn insane? <laughs> Avangard's matchups and how it performs in English set 13. The biggest horse in the room is Prison, especially since they have access to Muna. With the second they take your Sora period, well, you might as well start packing up. Otherwise, if you manage to unchoke yourself, you should be able to turn games around. Into Full Blast, or generally any turn free burst deck, will depend on how you approach the matchup, whether you give him a counter blast at all. Mind that your hand could be fake with shieldless cards, such as strategy orders need to keep at least one Persona copy, possibly Richards. If so, and you did end up letting them play, you just... die. Against decks of Rush or a relatively strong early game, again, depending on what you open, is judged on the scale of how fake your hand is. Potentially, you could just be eaten alive by the boards. Against turn 4 decks, since Avangarda's peak does eventually ramp up to turn 4 at the very earliest, is a matter of who can win rock, paper, scissors, call heads or tails correctly, hell, even roll the dice better. Go first, you'll be fine. Go second, just pray to god you'll get lucky to throw out the deck. However, Avangarda must ensure that it kills before the end of its turn 4. Avangarda into mid-range decks is a similar case to turn 4 decks, albeit that it is whoever wins the coin flip and who can flip more criticals than the other. Also how thick your hand is, but I'm just gonna, just gonna push that to the side. Mining that, going second is a bit tricky if the deck has a burst turn on turn 3, probably the turn 4 being a bit more dangerous because of Persona. 
Now, moving on to lists, let's take... Huh? Wait. Oh, we're moving on to 50 cards in January? Yeah. Um, first, we got the generic build, generally with 4 alves and a 1-2-2 two, two split of orders. Also running habitable to cycle out for key pieces. Huh? What do you mean this part of the video is under-edited? The viewer attention- Oh my- Do I actually gotta like, add Subway Surfers gameplay or something? Like what- Next, we have the featuring Fryheit build. Mind that Welster needs him back before sometime before noon, so use him well. Finally, your best friend Lloyd, to both aggressively filter and simultaneously search out for units, usually digging for Ella to combo and extend your plays. Since January 19th is coming soon, it means we'll be moving on to 50 card lists. So, for somewhat suggestions you could run for the last few slots, you can always bump up Asagate to 4, at least one of the orders up, or maybe additional techs, perhaps if you're lacking in shield value, bumping up the Brankate Cat, or running Elid Anti Waver since every other Brankate blitz is pretty bad, is also an option. And that will be all for Avantgarde today. If we missed anything, or if there's any other suggestions, please do leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our channel. I'll be signing off now, until next time, peace.